I've seen two articles on the same day talking about what the Senate looks like. One saying Democrats look like it's slipping. The other saying that Democrats are actually looking like they have a, sh a chance to hold the Senate. It's difficult to say. The, um, the Hill reported today that Republican senators are now trying to maybe slow walk the uh, omnibus budget deal that was talked about happening in December. That is an indication that they think that Trump has a better shot of winning than they did before. It's also an indication that they think they have a better shot at taking the Senate than they did before. But, you know, if, if elections were polling, then we wouldn't have to have the elections. Cruz could lose, yeah. Right now, the most likely outcomes in the Senate the ones that are most explicit is that Tester is in trouble in Montana. We know that Joe Manchin is gone. That takes us down to a 50 50 uh, tie. Or I should say, yeah, 50 50 tie at that point. I've seen reports that Sherrod Brown, it's tight, but he seems to be doing okay. Tammy Baldwin in Wisconsin, there's some concern that. Um, that her Republican opponent is gaining on her. There are no other sort of red flags that I've seen at least reported. The potential pickups, Dan Osborne in Nebraska, Democrats are staying far away from this because I think he probably doesn't want to be tainted with that as well. He is going to be, uh, if, he, if he wins and makes it 51-49 in the Senate, he will be our Joe Manchin, but the, the upshot is it's going to be on a different set of policies. He's going to be more populous than Joe Manchin was in terms of economics. You also have pickup opportunities potentially in Florida. That's more of a reach. I mean, you already have Rick Scott vying for, um, for uh, you know, Senate leader. But Texas seems to be actually, for the first time, legitimately in play for the Senate. For years and years, people have said, Texas, Texas, Texas. And it's usually just a play for uh, Democratic strategists who buy media to get money to go to Texas so that they can buy ads and get a big 15% off the top of that. That's the way it works. But Colin Allred seems to be um, doing quite well against Ted Cruz. And Ted Cruz is just one of the most odious people in the world. And Allred really, uh, people watch this exchange. There was one line in this exchange that stood out for me. Um, Allred's not going to be my favorite senator. <laughs> He's going to be pretty probably close to... My least favorite Democratic senator. He kept uh, touting that he was the most bipartisan uh, person in the House. So. It's Texas, but here we go. Congressman, Senator, let's move on to January 6th. And question for you. Your own words and statements have changed since January 6, 2021. At one point, you called the insurrection a violent terrorist act, saying anyone who, who commits an actual act of violence should be prosecuted. President Trump has said he would consider pardoning the rioters. Would you support that? You have 90 seconds. So, Grummer, thank you for that question. Listen, my view is clear. I think anyone who commits an act of violence should be prosecuted and should go to jail. If you assault a police officer, you should go to jail for a very long time. And by the way, that's true whether I happen to agree with your politics or disagree with your politics. I've spent 12 years fighting to defend the men and women of law enforcement. That's why I've been endorsed by the leaders of organizations, over 44,000 law enforcement officers. That's why I've been endorsed by Kim Ogg, the Democrat district attorney in Harris County. She is the twice elected Democrat, the chief law enforcement officer in Houston. She's endorsed me 
in this race. Why? Because she wants a senator who will stand with law enforcement, who will lock up criminals and fight to secure the border. And unfortunately, Congressman Allred's record on crime has been terrible. Congressman Allred has voted not once but twice in favor of defunding the police. Let me tell you what a disaster defunding the police had been. The defund the police movement started in 2019. From 2019 to 2023, let me tell you what happened to the murder rate. In Houston, it went up 29%. Right here in Dallas, it went up 17%. In San Antonio, it went up 57%. And, and my view, you know, Congressman Allred is happy to talk about those who committed acts of violence on January 6th, but you don't hear him talking about the Antifa and Black Lives Matter riots that burned cities across this country. If you commit an act of violence, you should go to jail, and there should be no political favoritism in that regard. Congressman, you have 90 seconds to respond. Oh, that, that was really something. I, I have to say, you can't be for the mob on January 6th and for the officers. You can't. And it's not funny because you're a threat to democracy. Sure. I was on the Senate. I was on the House floor when we went through uh, the votes. I remember when you objected to the results in Arizona. Y'all at home might remember where you were on January 6th, what you were doing. I know where I was and I know where he was. I remember when they told us to reach under our seats for these gas masks. I didn't know we had because they had deployed tear gas in the rotunda. The officers locked all the doors. We barred the doors the president walks through to deliver the State of the Union with furniture that we usually use to hold paper. And I texted my wife, Allie, who was seven months pregnant with our son, Cameron, and at home with our son, Jordan, who wasn't yet two. Whatever happens, I love you. And I took off my suit jacket, and I was prepared to defend the House floor from the mob. At the same time, after he'd gone around the country lying about the election, after he'd been the architect of the attempt to overthrow that election, when that mob came, Senator Cruz was hiding in a supply closet. And that's okay. I don't want him to get hurt by the mob. I really don't. This election is his accountability. You cannot be, just be patriotic when your side wins. If for the first time in 250 years, this project of ours, this shared American project, that we did not have a peaceful transfer of power, the folks responsible have to be held accountable. That's why Liz Cheney has endorsed me as it got involved in this campaign and is saying to Texans everywhere, do not put Ted Cruz back in a position of authority because he's done it once, he'll do it again. I actually think the moment where he says this is not funny. Great. I think that's, I mean, that, you know. Because Ted looks so small when you look back to him and he's smirking like yeah. that over the mob thing. Yep. People died, Ted, over you talking about the election may have had some funny business going on. People went and Ashley Babbitt is dead now because of those lies. The uh, durability of the notion that defund the police, or the uh, Floyd effect, somebody deployed that on CNN the other night, the Ferguson Floyd effect, based upon one article uh, on CNN in 2014, I think it was, James Comey said, yes, there is a blip in uh, the, um, the murder rate in some places in the wake of Ferguson. And it was because cops weren't doing their jobs. Cops were <laughs> refusing to do their job. And frank, frankly, I'm also not convinced that not only was that, but that there wasn't some padding going on with those statistics. Like, what a coincidence. And uh, that's the so-called Floyd effect and the defund the police where we actually defund the police without even defunding them, without even cutting their budgets, they get defunded. With actually the state government saying any municipalities, say in Texas, that want to defund the police can't. It's against the rules. The, I mean, the number of dollars that were... were uh, redirected from police departments um i don't know if there was any you couldn't start a basketball team no <laughs> and, but that is the thing that they'll go to ted did that uh in a different answer regarding crime he said that it was all because he did defund the police and people got excited and, and that's what led to the crime rates after 2020. that's what he, he said that in his response there uh to you know oh you talk about um uh, people Jensen. crashing through uh the congress and uh, trying to um lynch the vice president but you won't criticize black people will you <laughs> it's the Amazing. 
I, I'm curious as to where uh, Ted Cruz was if he wasn't in the closet. Ah, uh, Cancun, maybe. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.